Thanks very much. Um, thank you so much to PWI for inviting me to come along and speak to you this morning. Um, just a fantastic uh, group of people here today to listen, so um, I really hope you'll enjoy this. Um, I, I'd like to follow on from Andrew, uh, where he, he, he set out the, the strategic uh, goals, the policy goals, um, and, and maybe now talk a little bit about how that will uh, be delivered. Um, I'm also the first of a number of uh, speakers from Irish Rail today, so uh, my colleagues have given me the, uh, the honour of uh, explaining a little bit about, uh, and I've given you a little bit of an overview on the company here in Northern first, so I will do that uh, and then follow up with uh, a bit more detail about the Cork Area Commuter Rail Programme. <coughs> so uh, we'll get started, I'll do my damnedest Sean to keep to the the 25 minutes I have, uh, but I'll, I'll watch for the cards. Uh, hopefully I'll get through it quickly. Um, so uh, initially I'd, I'd like to just to give you an overview of uh, Erin Rod Erin. Um, so uh, our network and services, you know, 5,000 train <coughs> services uh, every week, uh, over a million uh, passenger journeys uh, carried weekly. Four, four and a half thousand, it's actually nearly 4,600 4, employees uh, currently. Uh, fleet of 670 uh, vehicles um, on our fleet, 145 stations. Very shortly we'll be going to 146, um, but I, I would hope that uh, the next uh, eight stations on the network will be in Cork, and I'll go to that there in a, in a few minutes. Um, just give you a, a sense of, uh, and Andrew mentioned this in his presentation, uh, the demand, um, you know, significant dem demand for rail. Um, and, and, and I'll focus mainly on post-COVID because uh, uh, you know, I think everybody understands what happened uh, during the period of COVID. Um, but we are, we're seeing now back uh, at, uh, in 2024 that we're back beyond and, and exceeding our 2019 largest ever uh, uh, demand for rail. Uh, so over 50 million passenger journeys. And that's very significant. I'll, I'll give, give you a, a flavour of, of how significant when it comes to uh, the Cork area. In terms of delivering the, the strategy, um, our goal, uh, so we have a, a, a series of strategies, uh, um, short and medium term, that will help us to deliver uh, the vision. Um, in terms of the uh, capital pr uh, programme, a very significant capital programme over the coming uh, decade. And, uh, so, some would say they coined the, the phrase decade of delivery. I, I believe we did in Irish Rail, but that, that's uh, a moot point. Um, but we have a significant uh, pipeline of projects. Um, I'll go into more detail on the Cork Air Commuter Rail Programme, but we, we have projects across DARP Plus, a very significant uh, uh, trebling of the, uh, the network in, on the DART in Dublin, um, uh, Limerick, Galway, Waterford, the regional cities, uh, Cork, uh, of course, and, and we're, we're also the Port Authority in, uh, in Ross Lair and a very significant upgrade of Ross Lair is taking place as we speak, and also the development of offshore renewable energy So, as, as a hub in Ross Lair. So very significant projects taking, pl taking place right across uh, the network uh, as we speak. Just as a follow-on, I suppose, in terms of delivering what Andrew has uh, set out uh, from the Department and the All Ireland Strategic Rail Review, uh, the implementation program uh, is, is effectively across uh, three decades, so we're right through to, to, to 2050, and a 30 billion euro investment, uh, potentially, right across uh, uh, the network in implementing all of the goals that were set out uh, by Andrew. In terms of the Cork Air Commuter Rail Programme then, uh, so Cork, Cork aligns with all the national, regional and local policies and the key uh, policy driver uh, in Cork is CMATS, the Cork Metropolitan Area Transport Strategy. Uh, and uh, effectively the uh, Cork Area Commuter Rail Programme is the heavy rail uh, proposals uh, in, that vis in that vision. Uh, so all of the objectives that um, are set out for uh, within CMATS for Cork, um, and particularly the heavy rail, um, are aligned with uh, the Cork Area Commuter Rail Programme. A little bit, of, I mentioned the, the, the numbers, um, really significant uh, increase in passenger growth in the Cork area. Um, since 2019, since po post-COVID, uh, Dart and commuter services nationally were probably around minus 25% post-COVID. In Cork, they were plus 25%. They're now currently, you know, on, on, they're thereabouts at 50% uh, over the, the minus 25. 
Uh, so really significant growth in the Cork area. A um, couple of things have helped to, to drive that growth. Uh, we've in introduced frequency, and, and Andrew mentioned that, that we, we've added frequency on the commuter routes uh, in Middleton and Cove to Cork. Um, the introduction of the leap card uh, to, to increase the commuter area uh, to include Mallow in the, in the leap card, and also the, the government decision to reduce uh, adult and youth fares. Really, really, all of that, those measures help to support a huge uh, and significant increase in passenger numbers. And that's continuous. You know, we're, we're seeing that every single day, every single week, every single period. So huge, uh, a huge, um, significant increase in passenger demand. In terms of the existing network in Cork, so today we operate services um, from Cork to Cove to Middleton uh, and Mallow. Uh, we also have some regional services to Tralee. We operate the hourly service uh, from uh, Cork to Dublin. Um, and the, uh, the, the services in Cork, are, are, are uh, those commuter services are operated on uh, two-car uh, diesel multiple units, uh, which uh, I've reminded Andrew are there since 1994. Uh, he had the pleasure of uh, visiting us there two weeks ago uh, to see them for himself. Um, fantastic units, but 30 years old uh, this year. So, you know, coming to life end. So we will need to uh, replace life expired uh, uh, fleet in Cork and also decarbonise the fleet. In terms of the uh, future network, well, CMAT sets out uh, um, you know, a significant uplift in access to the network in Cork. Eight new stations are proposed uh, along with the existing 10. Uh, a, a, a new integrated multimodal uh, hub at Kent Station, and Kent Station is, a, is the core uh, sort of gateway to Cork, uh, so the main station in Cork, and to provide that integration with a future Cork Lewis uh, bus connects uh, and those active travel projects. So, a really significant hub uh, at Kent Station. Also, uh, to provide uh, improvements to the existing 10 stations. So that there's qu quite an uplift uh, required in terms of delivering accessibility to, to those stations. Um, new uh, signaling capacity in the network uh, required uh, to deliver a 10 minute service frequency on all three routes. So really, really significant from 30 minutes today to a 10 minute service frequency. And that uh, will be a five minute service frequency between Glanton and Cork. To deliver that, we will need supporting infrastructure and fleet. Um, so, uh, new depot uh, required for at least 150 vehicles, uh, and the electrification or battery electric, battery electric or electric uh, uh, fleet. Uh, so, decarbonising the fleet in Cork. Um, so, a huge body of work, uh, significant transformation, and the largest ever investment in heavy rail in the regions and in Cork. Um, effectively a 1.4 to 1.6 billion euro investment. So how are we going to deliver uh, the vision of CMATS? Well, it's through seven uh, projects that are, make up the Cork Area Commuter Rail Programme. Uh, three of those, the first three, are, are fully funded um, uh, and are capacity projects, so delivering capacity in the network to provide that higher frequency 10-minute uh, service frequency in the future. <coughs> Uh, and the other four uh, uh, projects include new stations uh, and upgrades to and resilience measures on, on the network, um, the new fleet depot, electrification of the network, and also the new uh, rolling stock, the new fleet. So just to give you a little bit more detail about the, the, the projects themselves, the first three are uh, funded by the EU uh, Recovery and Resilience Fund, so we've had a, a really accelerated uh, approach to those projects early delivery, um, and the first one of those is the true platform at Kent Station. So it's providing uh, true running um, access from uh, Middleton and Cove through uh, Cork to Mallow without having to terminate at the, the main station in Kent. Um, so, so there's quite a lot of work has, uh, is well underway. That's the, at, at this stage, we're, we're at uh, platform foundation stage in Cork, uh, and that platform will be finished, commissioned by the end of this year. So really a, uh, ex an accelerated pro project, um, uh, a funding uh, commitment of 23 million euros in Kent Station, um, and that will provide that capacity in Kent Station to allow us to operate the higher frequency and true running services. 
terms of the second project, a very significant investment of, of uh, 180 million euro in signaling and, and communications, uh, effectively giving uh, an upgrade uh, uh, and providing the frequency uh, on the network for that higher frequency service in, in the future. Um, work is well underway, uh, and cons civil works have uh, uh, begun since uh, since February. So, really significant. Uh, acceleration of that project, again, expecting to complete it by the end of uh, 2026. The third capacity project is the Glenton to Middleton Twin Track, and this is a, a really significant project in that it's the first operational railway order we've had in this country in, in more than 10 years. Uh, so really, really good that we've got that through the planning process in, in less than 12 months. Um, and we're just about to award the uh, civil, main civils contract for that in the summer. Uh, with work starting this year. So again, 2026, we expect to have all of the capacity we require with the three of those projects complete. i just give you a, a, an idea. The, 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 the route from Gallantown to Middleton is 10 kilometres. Uh, so there's about 6.7 kilometres of it that, that, that requires double tracking. And then work packages four, five, and six, again, uh, we're ju just about to appoint uh, an MDC uh, in, in the coming week um, to, uh, to bring forward uh, th those three work packages to statutory approval stage. And uh, they include new stations, a new depot, and the electrification of the network. This will just give you a flavour of the sort of concept design for stations. Um, we'll be advancing those through with the MDC uh, uh, in, the, in the coming months. And then finally, I suppose, new, new fleet. Uh, and Critically, uh, in order to, to sort of match the existing uh, service uh, frequency in Cork today with life expired fleet and to deliver the uplift in service frequency, that's uh, the objective of CMATS and of the Cork Air Commuter Rail Programme, uh, a, a very significant increase in fleet is required, electric or battery electric fleet. Um, we have a, a, a framework order in place with Alstom uh, for extrapolis trains, 750 vehicles. Um, and the first two of those orders have been placed. Uh, some of our colleagues were out in uh, Poland recently uh, at the, on the production line, and we're seeing the first of those sets coming off the production line and will be in Ireland shortly. So we're seeing real, real progress uh, and uh, opportunity for replacing uh, and up upgrading our, our fleet. So thank you very much.